Hi, I'm Kathleen McElwain, and I want to show you how to paint this rooster. And first, we're going to transfer it over to watercolor paper. And when you turn your paper over, you want to you can see through the paper and see where you need to put your pencil. Now, I've, I made this uh, video a little bit faster so that I could be close to 10 minutes which is kind of the attention span they tell me on uh, for a video on Facebook. Um, but the video itself was initially about 20 minutes. So uh, just so you know how long it might take you to paint this. And I suggest that you pause the video when you're ready to um, do what I've um, what I'm showing you here. So right now I am outlining this pattern. It's a pattern taken from a painting that I did of a rooster many years ago. And now I'm going to use it, this image, to teach you how I would paint it. And I'm going to use prying watercolor paint. You can see that it's transferring to that watercolor paper. It's real light, but that's kind of what you want for a sketch. And then um, Fold that scotch tape down and um, get the the pattern kind of away from you. And that's the rooster that we're going to paint. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to load the brush with red. And what I'm showing you there is that all the paint is hard and dry. And this is the... Um, palette that my students uh, can purchase from me if they want to, and both the uh, prying paint and my palette both have primary colors, secondary colors, and brown and black. And also what I'm showing you is how the uh, water brush works. Um, so when you push down on your bristles, you um, it actually lets opens up the waterways. So now then, your paint's dry, and when you put your wet brush on top of that, you can load the brush with the color. And now I'm going to take that color and put it over onto the palette tray. And that makes sure that you don't have a big glob of paint or that you don't have too much water on your brush. You can really detect what your brush stroke is going to look like. And uh, when you're painting with watercolor, you don't treat it like it's a crayon. It's a paint brush. And so you put that color down on the paper and pick up the brush. You can just barely see that I'm actually picking up the brush there in between brush strokes. But I am. And um, I'm filling in that area that I've drawn that is the rooster's head, and um, I think it's called a, a wattle, um, the red thing that hangs down underneath their beak. So um, anyway, now I'm finished with the red, so I wiped my brush off, and my brush is clean now. And that's one of the things that's so wonderful about a water brush. So I'm going to leave that in there because it's not in my way. I've got plenty of room in my palette tray. And now I'm loading my brush with orange. And so orange is going to be the next color that we paint. And it's to paint the beak. And I just put that brush down into the shape of the beak. And um, that's what um, I created was the shape of the beak. And now then you can see me putting that brush down and picking it up. Um, sometimes I make a long stroke or a short stroke. Uh, like for instance on the rooster's neck, that was a long, long stroke. So now then my orange is still kind of wet and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna get some yellow and I'm going to paint that yellow, and I'm kind of trying to pull down the orange so they touch each other. I want um, that orange and that yellow to really touch each other, and you can see I kind of pulled down on that color. And like I said, I did speed this up, so take it easy when you paint it. Just pause the painting, 
I mean the video and uh, you'll be able to paint it as slow or as quickly as you want to. Now then we're going to paint blue and that's going to be the rooster's tail feathers and I just all I did was just um, lay some blue over onto my tray and primarily I'm painting kind of wet so that uh, I can pick up that stroke and um, make that loose uh, feathery look for the rooster's tail. And um, so that is how I painted the rooster's tail. And we'll go back into that rooster's tail in just a moment, but now I think it's ready for the purple. Um, but Maybe, maybe something needs to dry a little bit. And so that's a good time to clean your palette. Plus, I didn't have a really good place to put the purple. Um, you know, if you leave all those colors on the palette, you're inclined to pick up the wrong color accidentally and just pretty much come close to um, um, not painting what you wanted to paint when you uh, decided to paint the rooster. So now then I'm loading the brush with that purple and I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to just come in there and I'm going to put that brush down, a long stroke, a short stroke, and I'm going to pick the brush up after I've made the stroke so that I'm not messing in that paint. Because if you go messing in the paint, it's kind of what you do with a crayon, you know, to make it more full. We don't want that with paint. We want a variation of brush strokes showing. And uh, a painting is a lot prettier if you can see the brush strokes. And now I'm going to go back in with a little bit more uh, purple just so I have a little bit more interesting brush stroke in the front part of my rooster. So now then um, I, I picked up the orange and I painted his legs and his feet. And um, now then I'm going to pick up the black and just touch that brush down to do a little black eye and then I kind of did a um, little canopy line over the black line. Um, and so then I picked up more blue to do that feathery tail. So um, there you go. On <coughs> painting the rooster, that's all it takes and I think that Rooster's really, really pretty. And so now then we need to let it dry because the next thing we're going to do is take an ultra fine Sharpie and um, then uh, as soon as it's dry, we can um, do the black lines that I do on um, my paintings and that most of my students really, really enjoy doing. But this painting does have to dry for just a minute um, longer to have everything dry because um, the black ink, if it gets wet, it just won't come off um, at all. Um, it's, it's not, it won't bleed, it's a permanent ink, but it just won't come off of the um, marker at all. And I think I'm getting pretty close to thinking that my um, painting is dry enough. We're going to wait just a few more seconds here. Um, it was probably a minute or two to get started. Um, and uh, I keep checking it and the blue apparently is still wet. And it won't take me long um, to do the sketch on top of this um, painting. So I want to be sure that all of the colors are dry. Um, but it's very soon. Okay, so I'm ready to start now, and I'm going to start with his head. And it's, like I said, it's not really an outline. It's more of a sketch on top of it. I don't try to do it just so-so. And But I did go over his beak, and I do the outline. And um, I was just showing you that you need to be careful that you're not dragging your um, the heel of your hand through your wet paint. Um, you know, when you're painting um, this way, it's pretty easy to forget um, that you're on top of wet paint. And, um, and so just be real careful about picking that, um, keeping that hand 
picked up off of the paper. And so now I'm finished because I am signing my painting. And I really appreciate you all watching me. And I want you to know how you can find other paintings that I have patterns available to you. It's waterbrushteacher.com forward slash C-L-A-S-S-E-S. -S -S. So that's Waterbrush Teacher. And then if you're looking at the um, website itself, you'll see a link that says Classes. And so you can click on that. Thank you. I'm really glad that you joined me.